Hey, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be doing what I consider to be the ultimate mod for the PS1, and that is an installation of the PS1 Digital. So the PS1 Digital is a new board that was developed by Dan Koontz and Black Dog Tech. And what it does is it takes the uh, digital video and audio from uh, the PlayStation and it upscales it to 1080p. So you can get the best possible video and audio output from your PlayStation 1 with this mod. Uh, I would argue it's probably better than any other solution available, including even a backwards compatible PS3. Um, it looks absolutely outstanding, and uh, I've, I've got one myself. I was very lucky, and I got one of the first ones and installed it. I've been using it like crazy, and I never really played PS1 when I was a kid, so, so this is nice, like, just to get into these, these games and, and have it on a flat panel display and have it look absolutely crisp and incredible. Um, this mod is definitely harder than some of Dan's other projects, like the DC Digital, for example. Uh, the amount of soldering that you have to do is is comparable, but it's really the fact that like some of it is really fine pitch, like what you can see over here with this GPU flex cable. So today what I'm going to do is go through this install from beginning to end and show you how I do it and some of the troubleshooting stuff that I do along the way just to um, ensure that I've done things correctly because, you know, if you're not careful, it's really easy to damage either the, the PS1 Digital or destroy your, your PlayStation, which nobody wants to do. Okay, so let's get to it then. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is make some basic modifications to the interior RF shielding. Um, and I'm going to start by just taking care of the, um, the flex cables. So they come in this single package like this, and you can just kind of pull them apart like so. They're already pretty loose as it was. Like these, um, these guys were already pretty, pretty loose to begin with. Um, and you can kind of just bend the, the edges there to, to loosen things up and they should just come right out. Okay, so taking this apart is pretty easy. Um, just like uh, in my X Station video, I have a 5501 version of the PlayStation. This is the one I would recommend for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's there's a few that are compatible with the PS1 Digital, but this is really the best one to get because you can also use it with the X Station. So the owner of this particular console, he's not planning on getting an optical disc emulator, but if you are in the future, um, this model is compatible with both the PS1 Digital, the PSIO, and the X Station. So it's really the best one to pick out of all of them. And, you know, these days PS1s are super abundant. You can get them anywhere. Um, they're all over the place, and and they're inexpensive because a lot of people, they just want a game on their PS2s or PS3s, and they can use their original discs on there. Um, so fortunately, yeah, it's not hard to get these. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I already moved the six uh, screws on the back. On the bottom, rather, sorry. And then you can just pull off the shell, and then Sony very helpfully puts arrows where all of the... Um, where all of the screws are supposed to be. So I've already removed them here for convenience. So you can just kind of uh, take out the screws and then after that you have to disconnect the power supply, the controller port, and then the laser by pulling on this flex cable here and also by pulling on this one here which is the power supply, I believe. Okay, so the laser is removed. We're not gonna need that for a long time. Um, so then at that point, the next thing you need to do is take the RF shield off. And this top half of the shield is what we're going to be uh, modifying. So it doesn't need very much. We're just going to be, um, I believe we're just going to be taking two things off. So first thing we're going to do is there's this little like dimple over here in the metal. And it's going to bump into the PS1 digital board. So to prevent that, we're going to clip that off. Let me just get this out of the way. So you just get a set of flush cutters. It will go flying. But as long as this is now flush with everything else, you're okay. So there's that. The second thing we've got to do is this piece of metal right here also gets in the way. It's bent down and it's going to touch the PS1 digital. Um, that's also super easy. You just grab a set of pliers and just bend. And there we go. Comes right off. And that's it. Thankfully, there's not much else that we need to do to the board in order to prepare it. 
Um, you'll also notice there's this little copper tape RF shield here. This has to go. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. All right, so I'll be back in a minute, and we're going to get started with some more um, modifications to the board this time. Okay, so now it's time to start using the soldering iron. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is take the RF shield here off of the board because a lot of the chips that we need are down here. Um, so I want to just show you something really quick with my iron. So normally I use a tip that's, you know, kind of like this. This is a, a chisel tip. So it's, you know, kind of larger and flatter. And seriously, for like 99% of what I do, this is great. It does the job. In this particular case, though, I'm using a much finer tip, and it's still chiseled, so you can see it still has a flat edge, but it's kind of like beveled off to the side. And I prefer this because when I get to the stage of doing the GPU flex um, ribbon, it's a lot easier with a fine tip like this. So that's just something I do personally. It's not mandatory or anything like that. I'm just kind of telling you the techniques that I use. The downside to this is that you don't have a lot of surface area, so if you're trying to heat up something big like this, um, <laughs> RF shield is going to be a little bit more difficult and time consuming, but you know, so be it. I don't feel like changing tips, I just want to use one tip throughout the whole thing, so I'm going to stick with this. So the RF shield is soldered all on this side, it's not a through hole, it's all on the top side. And you can just see the little pads here, so you just have to come in and heat up this whole thing. I may actually change my mind about, well, no, no, it's melting. Okay, so you just melt it, and then lift the leg, and then when it dries off, you can put it back. So I'm just going to go around the board and lift up all those pieces. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is remove this serial port. So um, the, the way that the mod is going to work is that the serial port comes out and the HDMI port replaces it. And what's really nice is that that means that you don't have to cut the case in any way. The HDMI port is just going to sit right there. Um, it's not really much of a loss either because very few games actually use this thing. I think it's only a handful of Japanese games that actually use the serial port. And so, you know... Anything that you would have played in the United States as a kid or in Europe, you'll probably never use this at all. So let's go ahead and remove it. And we're going to do that the same way that I have done this in the past on the channel. So we are going to go ahead and just um, use the soldering, uh, desoldering gun. But before I do that, I just need to add a little bit of fresh solder to all the pads. This just makes it a little bit easier for the desoldering gun to do its job. Okay. So now let's go ahead and remove all that stuff. All right, so now that's finished, I'm going to go ahead and grab... Um, the heat gun and then just use a little bit of heat to get rid of the remaining bits of solder that are holding it together. All right, so I cleaned the area with some alcohol, and as you can see now, everything looks nice and, and clean and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and start adding in some of these flex cables. So first thing we're going to do is put a flex cable here where we just removed the serial port. And what I'm going to do is start just by adding a little bit of solder to one of these pads. And we're going we're gonna to use that as an anchoring point. So this is the serial port flex cable. And bear in mind when you look at all of these, they all tell you which side is up. So that helps so that you're not going to make a mistake and flip this thing around. So I soldered there just so that I could get 
everything basically pretty nicely lined up like so and then go ahead and heat that guy up now I'm going to add some some flux take care of the rest of the vias right here Okay, so the next flex cable that we're going to attach is the one needed for the controller port. And so this is needed for doing the button combos, so you can get into the menu. And they just kind of line up like so. You've got like teeth on both ends that you, you need to solder onto. So having the thin uh, tip is pretty nice for a situation like this. So I'm going to just start with one end first. And I'll worry about the other side in a moment. But just like before, we're going to add a little bit of flux, come in with the iron, tack it down, and then adjust and make sure everything's all set. Okay, so now that side is good, we're going to do the same thing here. Might need to use the tweezers just because this little guy here kind of gets in the way a little bit. And I need to be right-handed, and that is not easy for me because I am a left-handed person. Okay. Okay. So now that's tacked in, I can... Go back to my left hand and do it right. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that's clear on camera, but all 10 points are now soldered together, so we've got one more flex cable out of the way. All right, so now the flex cables are getting progressively more challenging. So this one here is the audio flex cable. So we're going to be soldering it onto this little chip right here. And we start all the way on the left. And then there's going to be two pins, I believe. Yeah, two pins left over on the right-hand side. So you just kind of line this up like this. And I'm going to go ahead and first start by tacking it down, adding a lot of flux. And then I'll go over each of the pins and make sure that I have a nice, good connection on all of them. And this is the type of thing where you definitely will benefit a lot from having a microscope or some sort of magnification because it's pretty um, it's pretty tiny and it's easy to have a bridge and not necessarily see it. There we go. Now it's at least somewhat tacked in place. It makes my life easier to get the remaining pins and not have any trouble. So I'm going to just add a little to my chisel here. And we'll just work all of these one at a time. And I can see some bridges, which is okay. It's pretty much bound to happen when you have a very fine pitch like this. But, but that's okay.
All right, so that AudioFlex cable is now installed. I am gonna go over it with my microscope to make sure. And as long as that's looking good, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the toughest part of this modification. All right, so now it is time for the most difficult part of the install, which is the GPU flex. Um, this is something where a you technically can do it without magnification, but I definitely do not recommend it. Um, the points are very small, and you really need to be looking in there to be sure that nothing is bridged or, or poorly connected. So um, I'm going to do this without magnification, but I absolutely will be double checking my work with my microscope afterwards. Um, I really wish I could do this on camera, but unfortunately my scope just doesn't have the kind of um, ability to connect a camera up to it. So I'd rather just do it like this and then show you guys what I'm doing and kind of um, proofread my work afterwards. All right, so first thing we got to do is there's a little resistor here that we need to remove. And doing so is easy. Just get some solder on both sides and wipe it away. And that's it. Very simple. Um, I'm going to get maybe just a little bit of some uh, solder braid. Just clean up the, the solder in that area. Get it out of the way. Okay. All right, so that takes care of that. So, um, next thing that we gotta do is align our GPU flex cable. And I can tell you that doing this is a little bit tricky, but um, basically what you wanna do is there is a, there's a copper pad that is right over here it's not connected to the GPU, it's just an exposed copper pad. And that is our furthest pad on the left that we're going to be connecting to. So you want to try to align stuff relative to that and then make sure all of your pins are nice and aligned. And we're going to tack it down in the center instead of on the sides. Um, from what Dan has suggested in his install documents, that is much easier than trying to um, Try to tack it down on the left or the right and making it kind of go from there. It's apparently much easier if you start from this, the center. And so far, anytime I've installed this, it's been from the center. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much aligned at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just add, seriously, the tiniest dab of solder to my tip. Nothing crazy. I'm just going to come into the center and just try to, again, I'm, I'm not looking for anything perfect, I'm just trying to get it tacked down. Okay, there we go. So there's just a handful of, of pins that it's soldered down to. Um, before I continue, I'm gonna just check my alignment under the microscope, and if everything looks okay, then we're gonna continue with soldering from the center and moving outward. Okay, so we are good to go. I took a quick peek. Everything is aligned. So we're gonna go ahead and start soldering. And what I'm gonna be doing is just adding some fresh flux. Because I, I only really have like one or two points connected. It's very, very little. And just like before, I'm gonna take my chisel and just add like a little Tiny dab, that was actually too much. Um, there we go, just a tiny little dab of solder, so barely anything.
you don't want to drag solder here. You want to just kind of go back and forth on the pins. And we're just going to work our way from the middle outward until every single pin has been soldered into place. And we might need to, um, I'm definitely going to be double checking my work. You can see that I'm using this set of forceps and I'm holding down the flex. That just helps me so that I can ensure that I have a good connection here. Okay, so at this point I think most of the pins are soldered, uh, but it's too zoomed out for me to see. I can't tell if I have any bridges or not. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the microscope, but at least this gives you an idea of the technique that you're going to use. You want basically to use like an up and down motion. You do not want a lot of solder on your, on your tip, and you want to make sure you're using plenty of flux to minimize the chance of any kind of bridges. Um, you don't want to move side to side because you can very easily bend or dislodge these pins and mess up the alignment and then maybe ruin the, the chip or the flex. So so yeah, try to try to take your time with this. This is definitely not something you want to rush. You want to make sure you've got everything perfect before you continue. All right, so all the work is finished and um, I double checked it on the microscope and sure enough, there were things that were bridged and things that were not connected very nicely. And that's because I was just trying to do it with my the naked eye without any kind of magnification at all. So once I got under the microscope, it became really easy to see what I needed to fix and what I didn't. So I just basically just ran over all of the connections with extra flux and that took care of the bridges and it also helped pass some of that extra solder onto some of the pins that really needed it. So now everything is installed, um, including these two anchor points here on the side. So what's the next step that I normally do? So, you know, technically one could start assembling the system and then test it out, but I don't recommend doing that. What I would suggest doing instead is if you go online to the install documents, there is a pinout available for the GPU flex and for the audio cable. And so if you look carefully, you'll see that there are a lot of places where 3.3 volts is right next to ground. You can see that here, here, here. Uh, this area in particular, you see there's a lot of grounds and a lot of 3.3 volts. You really, really wanna make sure that there's no bridges in that section. So I like to go through with the multimeter and test continuity between neighboring pins and just make sure that I don't get any beeps. I really don't wanna get any beeps between those points. Um, you can do it in more than one way as well. So you can, you can either use the pins here or if your multimeter doesn't have very fine pads, you can also potentially do it here on the pads of the GPU flex as well. But I always, suggest doing that. It takes a little bit of extra time, but honestly, you don't want to rush this. You want to take your sweet time with this and make sure everything is good before you commit to powering on the console and reconnecting it. Um, another thing too that you want to make sure is that the clock signal is definitely attached. Um, you'll have problems potentially if that's not in there because uh, it needs to know what the clock signal is from the, from the PS1. Uh, also, horizontal and vertical sync are over here too, so if you have issues with sync, then it's probably having something to do with the, the left side of the GPU flex. So, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and just test continuity. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go through the whole thing, but I'm definitely going to go through those major areas and just make sure I don't have any shorts and that I have a good connection. Okay, so I went ahead and tested it. I didn't have any problems that I could tell. So I think now I'm ready to go ahead and start putting everything back together. So you can see I've put the motherboard back into the case and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these little washers that are provided with the kit. We're just gonna put them over here. This is where the um, HDMI port is gonna go. Now we can go ahead and take our board. We're gonna go ahead and just open up all of these little flaps because the cables are gonna go into there. It just makes my life easier later on. 
There's a little thermal pad too that comes with the packaging. It tends to fall off. Uh, so just make sure you find it because this is needed to transfer heat from the board to the RF shield. So just make sure you put that there and that you didn't lose it or something like that. Okay, so this guy is going to get tucked in right there like that. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some screws and reattach the board to the new PS Digital, PS1 Digital. Okay, all right, so that's all set. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and start putting these cables into their spots. So we're just going to rotate them like this. And thankfully there's really no way to mess this up in terms of orientation because everything, as long as everything's installed properly, it's going to go in where it's supposed to. So just bring that in, lock it into place. Now bring this guy in. I don't want to crease it or anything like that. Just give it a little bit of a nudge to go in the right direction. You can just do it like right here at this capacitor. And this is all just going to kind of fall into place once the shield comes back down. Okay, and last but certainly not least is the GPU flex right here. And there's a little bit of adhesive on the back. So you just got to go in with like some forceps pull off the double-sided tape part and then just push down so that it holds onto place on that little chip over there. This is just for extra support purposes. It's not um, nothing more than that. It might pop up and that's also fine because in the end it's going to pop right back down once you put the RF shield into place. Okay. All right, so that's all four of our cables. Okay, so I've got the PlayStation plugged in, and I've got the power inserted, the controller port inserted. I've got a controller in here, and then I've got power and HDMI going to my TV. So uh, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and just do a quick test and make sure everything works. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, great. This one is perfect. So, um... Yeah, this is exactly what's supposed to happen. It'll boot up, I think, in 480i normally before you um, do anything else. And I'm just going to zoom in real quick over here. I don't know if this is going to be... Yeah, there we go. Now you can probably see it. So if things are working properly, you'll get a nice blue LED like this. Um, if uh, it's not, you'll get a blue strobing light. And uh, I think there's some other error indicators that are listed um, in the install documents. And so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, well, fortunately, there are no issues with this install. Everything booted right away. Um, but they, they do list a couple of things. Uh, and, and I actually mentioned a few of them here. And most of them revolve around making sure that this GPU flex is soldered correctly. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to test out the... Um, the on-screen display and so to do that you're gonna hit square and X start and then the two triggers the L2 R2 triggers and great okay so that's working too so we know that the on-screen display is working um, so we're basically done uh, the next thing that we're gonna do uh, which is pretty straightforward and trivial is we need to add a Wi-Fi antenna over here and then install that onto the um, the RF shield and so I'm gonna do that right now Okay, so uh, to get the Wi-Fi module attached, this antenna rather, attached, you just plug it in right over here, like so. I'm just going to loop it around like this. And we're also going to be um, taking this little 3D printed part. We're going to add that in where the HDMI port goes, and that just slides right in. You don't have to, like, do anything with it. You just push it into place. And now we're ready to add the RF shield. So... With the shield, what we're going to do is we're going to take the antenna, make sure it goes through this little hole over here. We're going to, oops, I missed a few little things. I got to pull the controller ports out and the power supply out. Okay, so those guys are in place now. This is good.
Okay. That was a little annoying, but I got it. <laughs> so we're going to put these guys back in. Power is back in. Control port is all set. And then with the antenna, last thing we got to do. Just take that out, and we're just going to lay it flat like that, right there. Okay, so I'm going to finish buttoning up this console, and then we just have to do one final test to make sure that all of the connections on the GPS GPU Flex are good. Okay, so I have got the um, PS1 set up on my main television which is capable of outputting 1080p, which my test bench monitor does not do, unfortunately. So uh, I used that to just to dial in the settings. I got everything up to 1080p. I went into the um, advanced video settings and I made it so it forces 240p because with this particular game, it alternates between 240p and 480i. So I wanna have that frame buffer there so that it does these instant switches and you don't even notice. Um, but anyway, that's not why we're here. <laughs> We're here because we need to do one final test to make sure all the connections are correct. So um, to do this, you need a game that has uh, FMVs. And I know in the install documents, they offer up some suggestions. I know that this particular game of uh, Soul Blade does have um, those kinds of those videos right in the beginning of the game. So I'm going to use this one to uh, test the, um, the connections on the GPU Flex. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the square button to reset the console. I'm just going to do a full reset by hitting circle. And then basically as soon as I can, I'm going to go into the menu, the you know menu for the PS1 digital. Okay, I'm in. So now I'm gonna go down to test info. I'm gonna hit R1. And what you wanna see here is hearts on all of those different signals. So you can see that right now. So if you look at all of them, you should see a heart on every single one of them. If there's an X, then that means that that connection is bad. And that's not a big deal. It just means that now you know exactly where to look on the GPU Flex to fix it. So if you go back to those um, pinouts for the GPU Flex, they're all labeled. And so there are signals that are labeled R1 through 7 and 0 through 7 and whatever. And if you've got an X there, then you can go ahead and um, you can fix that by just, you know, touching it up with some fresh solder. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this. This is definitely a challenging installation. I would not recommend this for a novice, but if you've got intermediate to you know good skills, uh, I would definitely recommend it. And the results are absolutely incredible. Your PS1 will look better than it ever has. Uh, and for me personally, I've never really known the PS1 library, so this was a great way for me to really get into it. Um, so yeah, if you guys like this content, then definitely give me a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I have videos like this out every Friday. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.